Let's start segment two with a look at sea lions. While sea lions have many adaptations in common with seals, they have some that seals don't. They move better on land due to their flippers that can change position, allowing them to use them as feet. Now, sea lions also have external ear flaps. They often float together in groups called rafts. Let's look at another marine animal that has a very different set of adaptations. Here's a short video about sea otters. Sea otters are marine mammals that have adaptations of very high quality, physical adaptations that turned out to be their greatest danger, leading them almost to extinction. Sea otters are not shy, this one unconcerned about a raft of seals it's swimming among. Sea otters are often seen floating on their backs, their hands folded as if praying, more often, these hands are busy feeding themselves or grooming their fur. Sea otters have great mobility under the water. They move swiftly like powerful living torpedoes in the water. Their muscular tails propel them through the cold water where they live. So what are otters doing underwater? Well, mostly they're looking for food. The food they seek is not the fish that swim among them. What sea otters really want to find are shellfish, and one of those is the sea urchin. Their taste for shellfish and their ability to eat them make them important in maintaining a balance in their environment. When sea otters were absent from coastal California, sea urchin numbers rose sharply and the urchins ate so much of the kelp forests that they damaged the whole system. When sea otters returned, they ate enough urchins to bring the system back into balance. The efforts to sustain sea otters include the work by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. While their sea otter display dazzles visitors, their conservation work supports their populations. Visitors can see sea otters grooming their fur. Without a thick layer of blubber, sea otters are kept warm by their thick coats of fur. How thick? A million hairs per square inch. It's that fur that almost drove them to extinction. Otter pelts were very valuable in the fur trade, making them the victims of fur trappers. Fortunately, laws and agreements between countries have saved the sea otter. Along with endless grooming of their fur, sea otters often gather a rock with the shellfish they collect. They use the rock to crack open the shell, allowing them to eat the soft inside of the shellfish. Sea otters are distinct from river otters. Their thick fur and their use of tools are adaptations that are exclusive to sea otters. They do share some features though. They are both very strong swimmers and they both apparently like to have fun. They're playful. Sea otters are another marine mammal with adaptations that allow them to thrive in our oceans. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. I'm your host, John Letts. This is episode 65, our second part about learning the physical adaptations. Now we're looking at the ocean to explore the adaptation of marine mammals. A song by a group called America contained the lyrics, the ocean is a desert with its life underground and the perfect the skies above. Well, the ocean can certainly have the beauty of the desert, but the life under the surface of the water can be intense. A coral reef is normally a place teeming with life. The complexity of the food web can often be seen here. Coral reefs are cradles for many ocean species, all of them adapted to this special ecosystem. Like the sea otter, these adaptations can equip ocean animals to live and thrive in their environment. Those same adaptations can also pose a danger to them. The striking colors of the coral attract people, some of them wanting to take a piece of it home. Now that not only damages the coral directly, it sometimes results in diseases 
that devastates the entire colony. We'll explore more of the ocean environment and what it tells us about animal adaptations. Meanwhile, let's look at some other animals and their physical adaptations. Let's start with this duck. This card shows a duck with two body parts labeled, its beak and its feathers. So how do these features help it survive in its environment? Well, the flat, wide beak allows it to trap food under the water. Those feathers are waxy. The dove can dip under the surface of the water without getting its skin wet or cold. Those feathers on its wings also help the duck migrate long distances, something many ducks do in the winter. Now we consider the elephant. We showed a video in an earlier episode about elephants. Do you remember some of the elephant's adaptations? That long trunk is a multi-purpose adaptation that helps the elephant reach and grab food, drink water, throw water on its body to cool off, and facilitates bonding with other elements, or elephants, I mean, in its family group. The big ears also provide an important function. The large ears function as radiators, allowing them to cool their body temperatures. The large ears also make the elephant look more dangerous to potential predators. Now here's an animal we haven't said much about. The wide foot and hump are identified in this picture. Now how are these adaptations able to help camels survive in their desert habitats? You know, as a child I used to believe that the hump was a tank holding water. I later found that wasn't the case, but the hump is a mass of fat that increases the amount of water a camel's body can contain. I'm sure you can make the connection between retaining water and living in a dry climate. The wide feet allow the camel to walk over loose sandy terrain, distributing its weight so it doesn't sink down into the sand. This picture clearly illustrates the advantage of having a long neck. The giraffe can reach vegetation that other animals can't. It also enables them to see trouble coming from far away. As for the pattern fur, how do you think this helps the giraffe? I suspect it helps them blend into their environment, making them hard to see by predators. We learned about these adaptations in an earlier episode not long ago. Those claws are very sharp. They can allow this raptor to grab and hold on to prey. The beak is also sharp. Now they need that to tear their food into bite-sized pieces since they have to swallow food without chewing it. Now what about these adaptations of the polar bear? A look at its surroundings tells us that it needs that thick fur to retain its body heat in the extreme cold environment in which it lives. The color of the fur is also an adaptation, making the polar bear blend in with its snowy and icy surroundings. While adult polar bears have little to fear from predators, they don't want to be too obvious to their prey. Now, the sharp claws help them do something that would be extremely difficult without them. It enables them to grab and hold seals when they come up through the air to breathe. And that's the main food source for polar bears. Let's consider the turtle. The turtle shell makes it a really cool animal, but that shell has more important functions. The hard shell protects turtles from many predators. Now, since turtles live in streams and ponds, they need those webbed feet to swim without using up too much energy. It's an important adaptation. Now, one of my favorite animals is the cheetah. It looks a bit lanky with those long legs, but that's what enables them to run fast when pursuing prey. Those sharp teeth allow them to kill the prey once they've pounced on it. The sharp teeth also permit them to eat the prey they kill. Finally, there's the fish. While all fish have gills, it's one thing that makes them a fish. Gills enable fish to get oxygen from the water. Their fins help them swim, and some fins are sharp enough to prevent being killed by some predators. I got these cards as part of a reading series. We'll look at some resources you can use to find the physical adaptation of your subject when we return. This ends segment two of episode 65.